Now to an incredible story. Oldham chairman Frank Rothwell is rowing 3,000 miles solo across the Atlantic to raise money for Alzheimer's research. And I'm delighted to say we can speak to him right now, live from the middle of the Atlantic, as he comes to the end of his journey. Good morning, Frank. Thanks so much for coming on this morning. So you set off back in December. How's it going? It's going really good now because I'm, I've only got about ten, nine or ten days to go and I'm really excited about getting into, uh, into Antigua to meet my, my grandparents and so my, my grandchildren and my family. Absolutely over the moon. Can't wait. Yeah, Frank, we've got a map of your location as of yesterday and you were saying there about you've only got you know a few days to go. 300 miles, I believe, from Antigua due to finish next week. I mean, just obvious question, but how much are you looking forward to that finish line? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that I can get there on Valentine's Day. Won't that be special? Because Judith and myself will be married 53 years. And to, to meet with my, my soulmate for 53 years after being away for like two months is going to be really, really exciting. I really am looking forward to seeing her again. Oh, yeah, that will be a Valentine's Day to remember for sure. Now, I've got a question for you. What are you oh. eating while you're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? That was a, a fantastic question. What we've got to do is we've got to keep the food as light as possible because we're going to take so much. Um, I say dried food, freeze-dried food. Uh, but my favourite is nuts, macadona nuts, because I can eat them any time. And also, for my breakfast, I have dry granola. I don't have to make anything liquid to go with it. And, um, and then it's packet food like, um, uh, yes, yeah, pot noodles. But I like pot noodles because there's lots of different flavours of them, and I can mix and match them. So for every evening meal, I have a pot, pot noodle. Well, that's... That's all right. I'm actually a big fan of those, Frank. <laughs> but when you get back, I bet you... Uh, what are you looking forward to most when you get back? The, the pies at Boundary Park? Oh, absolutely. No, I want to win. I win at my Boundary Park. That's what we need. The pies, I can live with the pies, people, which is long we're going to win. <laughs> You've been, I've just been looking at the, the results. I mean, you had a, a good December. January's been a little bit hit and miss. Have you been able to, to keep in contact with everything that's going on at the club while you've been out there? Yeah, of course. I, I don't have commentary on the... Um... Uh, on the on the on the match where I do form my son before I'll sign and afterwards and get the, the the news whichever way it will be. Um, so we we have positive things lined up for the future. So we're we for better things. You already set the record for the oldest person to row solo across the Atlantic in 2020 when you were 70. You're now 73, doing it again. Was it just a case of enjoying it so much you had to go back and do it all over again? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's, it's a major challenge. It's what I'm doing is an absolute major... It's, it's, I think it's the biggest challenge you can do in the world um, without somebody going to have to hold your hand. Um, I'm out here by myself and I've only got telephone communication with the race organisers. But in life, if, if you should always do something. If you can do, if you can do something, you're able. If you're strong enough, fit enough, and you can afford to do it, you should do it. And uh, and I've found this opportunity to to raise funds and awareness for Alzheimer's Research UK, which is, is what I'm doing. Last time I raised 1.1 million pounds for the for this really good cause, but. Um, what they've done now, the Alzheimer's Research UK have changed their strap line. Now it's going for a cure. So they're now raising funds to get this, this terrible disease uh, cured. You know, I've got to share something with you. Is that um, I was going to save this till the day I arrived. I'm going to tell you now. I've had, since COVID, I've had five friends or relatives die from dementia. During COVID, I only know two people who died of uh, COVID. Such is the problem with de dementia. You know, it's the biggest killer in the country. It's the biggest killer in the country. So I have made funds for Alzheimer's Research UK to put a stop to this, to find a cure, and that's what I want to do. Well, that's my mission in, mission in life for the last, uh, last uh, four years now, is to, to, to do that. And what, yeah. Frank, what you're doing, that is absolutely amazing. 
what you're doing. And you said that you raised 1.1 million. I mean, how much are you wanting to raise this time? And you, you've just explained why this is so important to you. Yeah, well, there's a, a, a target. It's a million pounds. That's my target this, this time. I did extremely well last time, but this time, um, let's stay with a million pounds. That's achievable. And I'm, at the moment, I'm just bounding on quarter of a million at the moment, and I've not arrived yet. So I'm really, really, really happy. Also, you know, we made it really easy for people to donate. It's dead easy. It was a just giving Frank Rothwell. That's just giving Frank Rothwell, and boom, away you go. It's dead, dead easy. And 100% of all money donated goes to Alzheimer's research. There's nothing taken out, no, no expenses, nothing like that. 100% of what's donated is going directly to Alzheimer's research. Brilliant, Frank. I can only imagine how tough it's been for you at times on your own as well. I've got another question oh. for you that I, I really need to know the answer to. How do you sleep? No, well, I never sleep really well. I don't, uh, you've got to realise it's still the middle of the night where I am now and I had an alarm clock this morning to, to wake me up. Uh, <laughs> sleeping once you get tired. If you can't sleep, you're not rewarded enough. Get back on them always until you get really tired and then you'll sleep. That's <laughs> my, my view. So, uh, but it's very, very, very uncomfortable. I'm sitting just sleeping on two cushions, which do two things. I sit on them when I'm rowing because they're nice, comfortable cushions and then I'll have them down and they'll they be better at night time. Um, I've got to share something with you. Uh, Last time it was difficult. This time it's mega difficult. Uh, the weather has not been in our favour at all. I've been capsized three times. Once I was on the deck when we capsized it threw me into the water and I was saved by my lifeline. I was hanging onto the boat just with the, with the lifeline because you've always, always, always got to have your lifeline on, on these little boats. So like, um, after that, that not me sick a little bit that because that was as close as you could never get to like saying bye bye to it all, isn't it? You know, so, Anyway, I've got over that now and I'm uh, fired up again now. Frank, you, you're scaring us a little bit now, yeah. actually, and I think, I know we mentioned earlier... Stay cause, safe. Yeah, exactly, because you, you're, you're 73 years old now, which is making this even more incredible. What you're doing is brilliant. Just remind everybody about how to donate, again, just in case someone's just switched on. I'm pretty sure that Oldham have probably gained some new fans just for you, Frank. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, the, the donate, just giving... Frank Rothwell, just dead simple. It, it, sometimes people want to donate larger amounts, which I think it's just it within the, um, the, their own charitable way of doing it. We just get onto Alzheimer's Research UK and they will deal deal with you directly and do special requirements for people in that situation. Frank, but, uh, you say thank you're... you very much for you say your alarm had to wake you up this morning at nine o'clock, so you must have been asleep for a long time. My question is, what happens if you, if when you're asleep, the boat drifts in the wrong direction? That will be a really good question. It's first of all, I have automatic steering on the boat, the electric powered steering. So I, I point the boat in the right direction. I put a point on the map. I say to the computer, go to that point. The, the, the boat generally, well, while I'm sleeping, the boat generally drifts in that direction. If it goes off the line, it goes beep, 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 beep. Cause that means I've got to hear see what's happened, and then I might make slight plus adjustments to the course or anything like that. So the boat steers itself. And during the night, I've averaged about one, one and a quarter miles an hour during my sleeping period. Uh, last night, and, and last night I had uh, uh, seven hours, got seven hours of sleep. I only woke up once, like men after it during the night. So I just, uh, uh, so, so I really like that. My sleep is, has not been an issue on this boat. Yeah, that, that beep, beep, beep is far more important than the alarm, co alarm clock to speak to, to Sky Sports News. Frank, just a, <laughs> a final question. I'm told that you want to be backed at Boundary Park for the game against Kidderminster Harriers, which is on the 24th. Oh, no, because you, you said you wanted to be back for Valentine's Day, but that one is... Yeah, but yeah, Kidderminster's a little bit... Oh, no, there's some away games in between then. So one, two, three, yeah. four games before that Kidderminster Harriers game. Yeah. How many points are you going to pick up in that time? I want to see oh, no, we want to be third. Yeah, I, I, my, my target got dropped while I'm away. I told you, I want to come back to being third. Because this season we've been rock bottom. We've been absolutely anchoring the, uh, the division up. We, um, after our first match at, at, at South End, which we thought we were walk over, we give us a very good idea. 
So then what happens is um, we are creeping up nice and quietly, and I want to see us in third by the time we get home, so we can, we can get, get... I don't know if we're going to catch Chesterfield up now, even though we did take two points off them earlier. Um, we... Uh, we... I forgot what else to do. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to get back and uh, go... I, I love going... When we were away, I love going and standing with our... Um, away supporters, you know, it's, it's, it's magic, and um, uh, I've got to, yeah, it's great to be there. Everybody makes me welcome. I want to, I want to feel welcome. I want them to feel welcome with me, and if you tell me how rubbish the parties are or anything like that, so yeah, I like the interaction. <laughs> Uh, we've got our fingers crossed for Oldham, but more importantly, Frank, we've got our fingers crossed for you. Thank you so much for coming on. Come and see us in the studio when you're back. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, I'd love that. Also, I'm hoping to finish, like I say, um, my target is Wednesday next week, which is Valentine's Day, so maybe you, you could call me on Valentine's Day. Oh, we've got another live link on Valentine's Day. Well, the day we arrive, we'll have television to actually do a live link if you go to do that quite well. I'd love to do that. Brilliant. Well, it's both of us who are on air next Wednesday, Valentine's Day as well, so that's perfect, Frank. Brilliant. We'll give you a Good shout. Good luck, okay. Frank. All the best. Thank you, for, uh, thank you very much. Thank you on behalf of Alzheimer's Research UK and, uh, and the charity and everybody for picking us up. Thank you very much indeed.